In 2010, Roy Hamlin generously allowed the Norfolk Historical Commission to display this set of paintings of historic sites. Uh, we bring you today the photos of those paintings made when they were displayed here at the Senior Center May 21, 2010. Horace Hamlin was born in England. He came to the United States as a young man, son settled his family settled here in Norfolk. He had studied art, but in order to support himself and his family, he went into the printing trade and worked with the Ambrose Press in Norwood for 40 years. Upon his retirement, he then devoted himself to his first love, painting. He produced commissioned paintings of pets, homes, landscapes, and many homes in Norfolk have a Horace Hamlin painting hanging on their wall. Today, we would like to share with you his set of historic site paintings. We're going to travel down Main Street. We're going to start just over the Franklin line at the mill. As we come down Main Street, we'll see this mill uh, depicted in a scene of a, dated approximately 1890. Note the old road that ran along the edge of the mill. The wagon in the forefront is on a path that was and is probably laden with coal being hauled from the railroad tracks which are on the south side of the mill pond. We head up Main Street, up the hill, just past Park Street. We would have seen this little quaint building uh, located on the, on the knoll uh, just after the intersection of Park and Main, and it was claimed by many to be the smallest post office building in the United States. It was built shortly after the turn of the century, and it burned down in the 1940s. Horace, Horace's wife, Frances, was acting postmistress at the time of the fire. Just beyond the post office, opposite the Myrtle Main Street intersection, stood the railroad depot and freight house on the north side of the railroad tracks. The freight going in and out serviced not only the local mills as in the city mills area, but also mills in Rentham and Medway. As we continue down Main Street, we next come to a large farm on both sides of Main Street. This painting was made, was, was painted from the railroad track side, looking towards Main Street. And it, down behind the barn, one would have seen acres and acres of corn. If we drive by today, we would see acres and acres of houses. As we come down Main Street and cross over the railroad bridge, we would see on our right the old Norfolk Library, shown approximately 1970, when only one small addition on the east side had been added to the old firehouse school that became our time, town library when it moved from the little room in the rear of the Grange Hall in 1951. This building has now been incorporated into the present day library. Before December 1922, this beautiful, impressive building sat on the town hill next to the library firehouse facing Main Street. It became, was, a, was Norfolk's first town hall after it was given to the town by the North Parish when Norfolk was incorporated in 1870. The structure was built originally in 1796 as the old meeting house and before renovation in 1879 had one bell tower and the entrance faced Main Street. Note the beautiful clock in the bell tower. This was a gift from Josiah Weir, the station agent at the time. This painting is, is presently on display, public display in room 124 of the Norfolk Town Hall. Continuing along Town, Hall, Town Hill until we reach the intersection of Rockwood and Union and Main, and on the east side of what had been the town hall, we would have seen the old stairs leading up to the war monuments, World War I with the flagpole behind, and the old bandstand which had been built in 1914 to the left of it. The stairs have been remodeled and the monuments have been moved to the other side of the flagpole, and the bandstand has been replaced with the gazebo in the center of Town Hill. On Main Street, directly across from the old meeting house or the town hall, 
where Country Crossing is today, we would see, have seen this structure. This is depicting Edward Mann's store and home around the beginning of the 20th century. At the time of the Revolutionary War, the building was known as Josiah Weir's Tavern, and when the Meeting House was built in 1796, Ebenezer Blake was operating a store there. It remained a store until Howard Mann sold it in 1951, and it became St. Jude's Rectory and Chapel, and this was all demolished in 1981 to make way for the country crossing. We see in this picture the original railroad station. <clears throat> it burned and was rebuilt in the 1940s. You'll note to the right of it the little building which housed the gatekeeper, the man who came up and held the sign and told you to stop when a train was coming through. Centennial headquarters were based in this building in 1970, and it was torn down by the MBTA in 1980s. Mrs. Doopy's restaurant is to the right of it, in the behind it. Uh, this became Thayer's store and post office, and more recently the home and office of Frank Gross, our former town moderator. If we go back to the intersection and turn right on Union Street, we would travel to the end of the town hill and find uh, the old parsonage on the corner of Union and North. This painting shows the building after its 1965 acquisition and restoration by the Federated Church. In 2010, it underwent a second restoration and is currently functioning as the parsonage. Its history, in 1810, Josiah Weir sold it to Reverend John Cleveland, who was the first pastor of the North Parish, and it became the first parsonage until 1840. From 1840 to 1965, it was for private residence until the Federated Church purchased it. This painting is on public display in the Low Stutter Room of the Federated Church. Now we leave the center of town and continue on Main Street down to the cemetery and turn left on Seekonk and continue on Seekonk until we reach Campbell Street and down Campbell Street across the Stop River and to our right between the river and the Arch Bridge we would have seen this paper mill known as the Highland Lake Paper Mill. It was owned by the Walls from 1896 to 1925. Prior to that, it had been owned by the Campbells, and before the paper mills, uh, there was a, this was the site of the Walpole Foundry from 1825 to 1839.